Hey YouTube, this is a video write-up for the challenge Ogres Are Like Onions from the B-Sides Connecticut Capture the Flag competition in the steganography category. The challenge prompt here is sometimes things aren't what they seem, sometimes things are what they seem. Damn, that's confusing. Regardless, this is a thing. So this challenge was brought to you by our friend Arden at Sec DSM, uh, and we're given a download here. The hint did not come out until later on in the game, and I never solved this during the competition. Uh, and no one else did. In fact, the first solve is from just a couple minutes ago, <laughs> like la the, the last hour, uh, while I was just trying to get this right and go ahead and submit it now. So, Let's go ahead and dive in. We have that MPEG or MP3 file to download, sorry, uh, and it is simply that. It is an audio file. We can go ahead and play it. I'll use mPlayer, and I don't know if you can hear that right now, but it's a lot of beeping. It's stupid stuff. Uh, originally, I thought, oh, this is DTMF F tones, because I wasn't really paying attention or listening. It's DTMF, uh, and then I wanted to go ahead and decode them, but for some reason, this site is down, and I feel horrible about that, because I don't know any other resources to decode uh, DTMF tones. Uh, it's not important, because this isn't actually... That, that's not the correct lead for this. Um, if you actually open this up in another utility, like Sonic Visualizer, or something to really be able to actually look at the file. Let's see. Okay, I've got it in download. That's good enough. This kind of looks like Morse code. And maybe that's harder to tell, harder to determine, but you can see these some waves are long and some waves that are short, etc. So, okay, if it's just the same tone beeping over and over again and just varying in length, maybe this is, in fact, Morse code. So I figured, well, let's go ahead and play with that. Let's go ahead and figure that out. Let's use a Morse code decoder, uh, maybe audio file wave. So I just went to this site online. And actually, if you do some reconnaissance on the file, if you just like were to use EXIF tool, I think, on that, yeah, you can see, okay, it's got a title, it's got an artist, it's got a band. These, these are specific people that had put this together. Uh, looks like besides Iowa is referenced in here. Maybe this, this challenge was originally put there. Uh, but it says, hey, this was encoded by this URL. And it discusses their, their page and all. So, fine, let's just jump in and use this, because that's the correct page that we're on here. If we wanted to, it says, if you've arrived here, you might prefer the newer streamlined version, which adapts to the speed and frequency of the Morse code. However, it doesn't give us a whole lot of options, and this one does. Uh, we can actually select something specifically that we want to look at. So, uh, I'll go ahead and upload a file here. I'll put this in the B-Sides CTF thing. Steg. Ogres are like onions, and upload it. Cool. So, if we were to play here, or move down to the very, very bottom, it actually gives us the message that it's trying to read out. So I'll hit do it. I'll hit the go button. And it'll slowly process, I hope, I think. I may have to have set, like, apply or play or something. Yeah, I had I struggled with this one, which is why I went to the newer version. But this one is, th this, this original page is a lot better for giving us something when you specify two-tone. And I don't know if it'll let me do this or not. Yeah, hit the stop button. Maybe my internet connection is just crap, and that's why I can't process this very easily. Let's try the stream, streamlined version. I'll upload this guy. Hit play. And, okay, audio is on. I'm just trying to process some of this stuff. Let me turn that down. And we get this text that's coming out of it. Um, the other messages that you actually be able to see from this, if you looked at it with two-tone or with other things, it says this is, uh, like, 20 WPM with a higher frequency, etc. Um, and at the very end, it looks like it's getting us BT. Um, yeah, BT. Uh, and what is it? Oh, I don't forget the proper terminology. Was it ProSign or something? Morse code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro signs for Morse code. Yeah. So BT is like starting a new, new thing. I can't. I don't want to say like paragraph or breakthrough, but okay, break. Yeah, break. So um, when I looked at that, I realized okay, same as character equal signs or something, and I thought that's peculiar because when I look at this, clearly this this is harder to determine as base sixty four, but uh, I know it may very well be another base. Like, a lot of common cop capital letters is, like, base 32. So I didn't process immediately that the BT or the the breaks were referring to equal signs, but when I look at it later on, it makes so much more sense to me. 
So I didn't see the hint originally at the time as well. It wasn't out at that point. Um, but had I seen it earlier, I might have had a better luck with this because that is in fact something that may look like base 32. So let's go ahead and import base 64 and Python. Base 64 and Python, that module does in fact have a B32 encode and decode set of functions. So we can base 32 decode. I'll give it this and maybe I had wrong padding there. Yep. Okay. So throw another equal sign on there. You can see it's trying to trying to throw something else in there. And we're, I'm given this, right? Interesting. Peculiar. I have no idea what this is. I have literally no idea what this is. I thought it was base 85 or the 58 stuff. Uh, and then eventually looking at the hint, once it got released, it says, uh, oh, not all your, not all your base are 64. And I agreed with this, that th this made sense in my mind for what we had already figured out. Okay. Uh, assuming, assumingly base 32. Uh, and I screwed around with like, oh, add more equal signs, uh, subtract equal signs, just twink, mudge and, and fudge some of the, the characters in here. But I was given this at the end of the day. Didn't know what to do with it. Had no idea what it was. Kept trying to play with it. Blah, blah, blah. The competition ended. Everything was over. And I figured, I, we asked the guys, what is this thing? And then he tells me, oh, it's Rot 47. I was like, what is that? <laughs> Not like base 37 or anything, uh, base 47. And I found it and read a little about it. And it's, it's peculiar because had you looked at like literally the rot 13, like a regular Caesar cipher thing on Wikipedia, they actually talk about rot 47 and the variation section. It says, Oh, it's a derivative of rot 13, where in addition to scrambling the basic letters, it also treats numbers and common symbols as part of the translation series. Instead of using just a to Z as the alphabet, it uses all the characters like everything in ASCII. So you can get some interesting crap. Very cool, right? I'd never heard of this, and I and I definitely want to add this to like my CTF Katana thing. If you haven't seen that, that's a cool thing. Go ahead and check out John Hammond, GitHub, CTF Katana. Has a lot of references and resources for our CTF stuff. I definitely need to add this into it because I just thought it was very, very cool. If you just go ahead and go to a ROT47 decoder, track one down online, build something, interesting stuff, we can go ahead and submit this. Paste it in. Idle. Where'd you go? Is it all gone? Did I lose it all? Gosh dang it. Alright. Let's re let's redo that. I may have closed out of it like a fool. I don't even have the whole thing to copy and paste in. Four equal signs. What? Ah, I used sixty four. My bad. Thirty two. There we go. Cool. Let's go ahead and throw this into RAW 47. Decrypt it. It says, from SecDSM with love. That is the flag. That is what we should submit. And that is what would give us 500 points. Except <laughs> uh, none of us got it during the competition. No one that was playing figured this out. Um, but after having that conversation with the creators afterwards, we realized it was Rod 47. Very cool. I'd never heard of that before. So, hey, maybe that's a nugget for you too. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys for watching. And before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to the people that support me on Patreon. So thank you guys so much. One dollar a month or more on Patreon will give you a special shout out just like this at the end of every video. You got your name added to the list. Get your name up in lights. It's just a feel good feeling. It feels like you're helping people in the world, helping some guy just trying to make his own path. It's cool. <laughs> uh, Five dollars or more on Patreon will give you early access to everything that I release on YouTube before it goes live. So I like to record some videos in bulk when I'm going on a streak, feeling good, actually being productive for once. Um, and I will let them sit in a shared Google Drive so that anyone can access them while I'm waiting on YouTube to gradually release them on a schedule. So slowly but surely. Uh, if you want the content right when it's ready, right when it's hot, right when I've got stuff recorded, that's the way to do it. And it helps me out. I'm grateful and I thank you for your help and support. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Join our Discord server, link in the description. It is a cool community full of CTF players, programmers, and hackers. Uh, it's slowing down. we got a lot of people in there, and hopefully the, the life will come out of it again. But uh, we'll jump in the next CTF, right? I think Square CTF is coming up this this, this, this weekend. I'll be at B-Sides Delaware, give another talk, playing pros versus Joes again. Cool, cool stuff. So, all right. See you guys in another video. I love you. I'll talk to you later.